it this morning. I wouldn't have not one reservation, and don't you have one either, because God has been good to me. Can I get a witness? That through the tough times, he's been good. Through the good times, he's been good. Through no times, he's been good. Can I get a witness here? I can look at my wife. I can look at my children and tell God has been good to me. Good God Almighty. Woo! Lord Jesus. I can write my own book. Amen, somebody. And I'm glad about that. There is a word from the Lord today. We read the scripture. I'm not going to read them all again. But I do want to point out to you verse number 50 in our text. Listen at this, verse 50 and 53. It said, Jesus said unto him, go thy way. He said, thy son liveth. And the man, look what the word said. The man believed the word. And Jesus was the word. And verse 53 said, so the father knew that it was at the same hour in which Jesus said unto him, thy son liveth. And look what happened. And himself believed Amen. and his whole house. And, and so, so I, I come this morning uh, just to let you know, I believe. Amen. What about you? Yeah. And, and I want the whole house of God here at Greater Works to be believers. Believe God's word. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now you, can, you can blow spark off in all them self-help books, but you need to believe the word of God. Yeah. Can I get a witness here? And so that's what we're going to talk about this morning for a little while. I believe. What about you? Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we're so grateful this morning. And we thank you for your word. We thank you for eternal joy, oh God. And like this man with the dying son, oh God, he's met you on the road and he asked for prayer. He asked for healing for his son, not for himself but for somebody else. And Lord, you told him, since he believed, his son was healed. And I thank you for that, oh God. Thank you for your love and thank you for your joy. Thank you, oh God, that we're able to trust you in all that you do in our lives. Hide me now behind thy cross that they may see Jesus and glorify you who sits in heaven. It is in Jesus' precious name. Holy Spirit, have your way in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I believe. What about you? Amen, amen somebody. This is, a, this, is a, this is a very strong text of scripture here in, in John chapter 4. Uh, we see that Jesus is traveling through the lands of Samaria and Judea and Cana of Galilee and Jerusalem so he's he's making his way around through his ministry and you know by now his ministry had become well known by now he, he Jesus was becoming quite popular among the people and, and, and not only among the people uh, among those that really wanted to kill him as well uh, they knew the power that he possessed Amen. And I, I love this story because here comes a, 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 a nobleman, didn't say whether he was a believer or not. Came, uh, here comes this nobleman who was seeking Jesus for healing for his son. And so today, you know, many people believe that Jesus is the son of God. Many believe that he's the savior of the world. The woman at the well in Samaritan, she, she told everybody she knew that she believed. Y'all remember? Amen, somebody. Now, Jesus departs Samaria and enters into Cana of Galilee where he meets a man of status. Yes. Uh, they, that book said he was a nobleman who needed the Lord of Lords. He needed the great physician to step in in his life. Can I get a witness here? Like, like many of us, I, I mean the doctor's going to tell you all that you uh, uh, what's going to happen uh, by, by their philosophy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but you need a word from the great physician. Yeah. You need a word from the one who made the doctors. Yeah, yeah. 
to, to, to intercede here. And, yeah. and, and that's, that's what this nobleman realized. He probably, the doctors, the, the local doctors had probably been, he may even went to one of them root doctors. I don't know. What, what he even gave him all kinds of concoctions. But here's the master. Can I get a witness here? He went to the master of the physicians. Can I get a witness here? And, and, and you know what? When I, when I read this text, the one thing that I realized, Jesus knows how to fix it. I don't, I don't care what situation you in in life. Doesn't matter. Jesus knows how to fix it. Have you, ever, have you ever been to the point in your life when you just wanted to, just want to give up. H have anybody other than me ever been there? Have you ever been to that point in your life you just wanted to? Huh? There, there, there might be somebody in here today. Uh huh. That's thought about giving up. You, and you know, and, and you know, uh, it used to be that you didn't hear about suicide among blacks, but but let me tell you, it, it's gone up. It, it, at, at the VA, through the VA system, there are 23 veterans that commit suicide every day. 23. 23 a day. I ain't saying a week, a month, a day. Can I get a witness here? They have thrown in the towel. They've decided to give up. Life has tossed, let's be, let's be real, life, life has tossed a lot of people to and fro. People are giving up in their lives. They, and even Christians, and I keep hearing this, they are trying to give up their relationship even with Jesus Christ. But I'm a contender that once you're saved, you're always saved. You can walk away if you want to. But God still has his hands on you. Can I get a witness here? Life has tossed people to and fro so much that it has driven many to the point that they want to give up. Can I get a witness here? Maybe there's some of us in here today. I, I've been there. I, I've been there. Can I get a witness here? Lord, Lord, why me? When, when is it going? When is it going to get good or gooder for me? Can I get a witness here? Those hard life experiences, my brothers and sisters, can have us walking through the low valleys of life. Uh -huh. Amen, somebody. You, you, you know when you're in a low place, you can't do nothing but look up. Yeah. Or you should be looking up yeah. from which our help comes from, especially for us Christians. Now, now if you don't know the Lord, you have nowhere to look. Oh can I get a witness here? Yeah. But when you're in the valley low, you have to look up. Can I get a witness here? Towards your help. And your help comes from the Lord. Amen. Yeah. We have sometimes we gotta we gotta climb up on the rough side of the mountain. I, I, I don't know, I don't know anybody can get up on the smooth side of the mountain. Can we, you, you need some foothold. Life will teach you how to survive. Are there any survivors in here? Can I get a witness here? You, you got to have a place to put your foot on that mountain so you can push yourself up. Amen. We got to learn how to withstand the storms of life. If it's raining in your life, put up an umbrella. Amen. Just walk around out in the rain. Here's your umbrella right here. Amen. Put it up. Amen. Can I get a witness here? Many of us find ourselves crying in the, in the midnight hours. But I come by to let you know, Jesus can fix it. Amen. Jesus will fix it. Amen. When we call on Jesus, guess what? He steps in. And he makes everything all right. He wipes away all the tears from our eyes. Won't he do it? He made us whole when we we're broken. He made our crooked paths straight. And so, so my brothers and sisters, we, we, we must realize, uh, amen, that Jesus, he might not come when we want him to. Can I get a witness here? 
And you know, you know, and I, I'm learning your, your troubles come, your trials come to teach you something. And, and here's the problem with us is we want to be snatched out too quick. And, and now, now, don't get me wrong. Nobody, nobody likes trouble. I certainly don't. Amen. I, I, I remember when mama would whoop us. I'd be glad when she got through. <laughs> a- amen. Same analogy. In, in our troubles. Amen. Nobody wants to stay in that trouble long. But let me tell you, if you don't learn the lessons. I, I remember when mama, would, she, she'd be whooping, she'd be talking to you at the same time. Do you hear me? And you better say something. Do you hear? If you don't say nothing, she just keeps swaying. Do you, do you, don't you do it? No, ma'am, I ain't going to do it no more. After then, it'll ease up. The, the, the swinging ease up. But as long as you sit there, act like you can, I can take it. Yeah, you go ahead. God's the same way. You must learn the lessons that God is trying to teach you. Can I get a witness here? When, when we call on Jesus, he's, he's never too busy to answer us. But you got to learn the lesson. He's always available, always knowledgeable about our real needs. Not just our wants, our needs as well. I, I heard somebody said this morning that God blesses me even when I don't know. Even when I'm not sure. I'm not, I, I'm not understanding what's going on. I don't know how I got there. That's the kind of God we serve. Can I get a witness here? The only thing we have to do, my brothers and sisters, the Bible says we got to believe in him. We have to believe in his power. And we have to believe his instructions. We got to follow him. We got to follow him. We got to follow Jesus. Let him take the lead in your life. And so today I want to take a few minutes from this text here. We're going to see... Uh, this nobleman's, nobleman's sick son and he was at the point of death and how Jesus handled it. When, when, when he heard that Jesus was in town, can I get a witness here? He walked from his house in Capernaum to see him in Galilee. And, and, and the text I read that that was about 20 miles away. Can I get a witness here? We have cars motorcycles, all kinds of transportation. We came drive five miles to the church. Can I get a witness here? This man, this man, this nobleman heard that Jesus was coming, was in town. He got up out of his bed, cut off the TV, and started walking. Can I get a witness here? Now, I, can, I can imagine... You know, we, we, we had a standard. We had to run two miles and how long, Frank? How long? Two miles? We had a two, about 20 minutes, 21 minutes, something like that. That's the old folk. Oh, it's new now, huh? Yeah, oh, Lord Jesus, I'm glad I'm out. This man had to walk 20 miles. Can I get a witness here? Because he was seeking the healer. He had a great need. He needed the savior of the world. Amen, amen. He took off walking because he believed. He believed that Jesus could heal his son. Can I get a witness here? And in verse 47, the nobleman humbly approaches Jesus with his request to heal his son. He didn't go up there all arrogant and stank. Can I get a witness here? He humbly, look at verse 47. It says, when he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea and Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Can I get a witness here? Then Jesus responded to the, to the nobleman's request on the basis of a Galatians tradition, resistance to his message. He is testing, look what Jesus is doing. He's testing the nobleman's faith. That's what he's doing. He's testing his faith. He's going to test your faith. The nobleman illustrates urgent and unmovable faith in Christ and his healing power. And look what happens between verses 49 and verse 50. Look look what happened. Just in, in the blink of an eye, 
look, look what happened. In the blink of an eye, look what Jesus told him in verse 50. Jesus said, go your way. Your son lives. Amen. He healed his son just that quick. He didn't have to go to the house and throw some oil on him. He didn't have to say no special prayer. Can I get a witness here? Jesus told him, says, sir, your son liveth. Can I get a witness here? He told him to go home. <laughs> he healed the nobleman's son in Capernaum <laughs> while talking to the nobleman in Galilee. My God, my God. Isn't that good news? There's no distance too short or too long for Jesus to heal anybody or any situation. We need only to believe in the power of the Savior. In verses 51 through 40, uh, 51 through 54, while the nobleman was traveling back to Capernaum, said his servants met him along the way and told him, said, look, your son liveth. And then he got curious. He, he started doing a, a fact-finding investigation. <laughs> he started doing some fact-finding investigation. He asked his, his servants some questions. He said, about what time? What time was he? He said, well, about the seventh hour. Uh-huh. The fever broke. And he realized that was the exact time he was talking to Jesus. The facts matched up with his faith. Amen. Can I get a witness here? Uh huh. His facts matched up with his faith. And we can learn three things from this nobleman today, my brothers and sisters. Number one, first the thing we need to do, we got to believe in Jesus Christ. We must believe in Jesus Christ. We must believe in Jesus, his healing power. That's the second thing. And the third thing that we can learn here, we must believe and obey Jesus' instructions. And I thought about this from this morning. Supposing when Jesus told him, said, sir, go home. Supposing he had a hung around, I ain't going nowhere. Y'all know how we act sometimes. No, I, 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 got, I, got, I, I, I want to hang out with you, Jesus. He said, no, go home. He obeyed Jesus' instructions. Can I get a witness here? He believed in Jesus. Uh -huh. He believed in the healing power of Jesus. And he followed the instructions. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we struggle with those. At least that last one. Follow instructions. Can I get a witness here? And I just want to share some healing power things with you about God right quick. And I'm done. Psalms 23 and 1 says that the Lord is my shepherd. Can I get a witness here? And it says, I shall not want. And if I'm going to follow Jesus, I'm going to have to learn to allow him to lead me. Right. Psalms 35 says, weeping may endure for the night. Oh, but joy. <laughs> I, I bet every step, the whole 20 miles back, I, I know the nobleman didn't know what they expect, but Jesus had told him, say, your son's been healed. It, he may even ran a little bit back. Yeah. Can, I, can, I, can I get a witness here? I, I, I can't, I, yeah, he didn't stop the fish. Nah. He didn't stop at the tavern to have a drink. Can I get a witness here? He didn't stop to call mom and them and all that. Nah. He headed back home where Jesus told him to go. I, and I believe joy kicked in every step that he took. Can I get a witness here? And Isaiah 40 and 31 tells us, but, but they that wait upon the Lord. And I can see he was waiting on the Lord. He went to see the Lord. He waited for the Lord's instructions. Can I get a witness here? Isaiah 54 and 17 says, No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Death had to behave. Can I get a witness here? Death had to behave. Now, now, now later on, I'm sure the son died, but not this time. Can I get a witness here? Not this time. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. It's got to stand still when Jesus tells it to. Can I get a witness here? Philippians 4 and 13 says, I can do all things through Christ. That strengthened me. Christ. 
Can I get a witness here? Not only did he strengthen that nobleman, he strengthened his son as well. Can I get a witness here? Philippians 4 and 13 says, But my God shall supply all my needs according to riches that are in Christ Jesus. And I don't know about you this morning, but I believe. I believe what about you? I believe the word of God. I know what it says to me. I know how. Pray and then you react. Can I get a witness here? There, there, there's one more, one more thing that I need to tell you about, about healing that you need to know. That the blood of Jesus is sufficient. <laughs> First John 1 and 7 said, but, I, but if we walk in the light and he's in the light, we have fellowship with one another. The blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sins. So, so the blood... It will make a huge difference in our lives if we only would believe. And, and so this morning, I come to you. I believe. What about you?